It is time to build the ultimate Z87 Haswell ITX rig. You ready to do this, JJ? Most definitely, man. I think this thing is going to be badass. We've got JJ here from Asus, and uh, you brought a few parts with you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put those in there, and uh, we're going to make this thing insane. So what did, what did you bring? I uh, brought a little bit of everything. Like you said, we're trying to make here really a ultra high performance, but compact base mini ITX system. So first and foremost, right, we just launched the 87. So we've got our Z87-I Deluxe, right? So that's the, the little mini golden beast, the as golden I called beast. it. Right? I mean, we got the... That's not the official marketing term, right? That, that's technically, it's not the official marketing name, right? We're working on that one, but, yeah, we're gonna call you know... It, it's it, like a main. Yeah, it, <laughs> it does maybe need a little <laughs> bit of a main. Maybe we'll put a main on the... <laughs> Outside of the Lee and Lee. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's an ultra high performance board. We've got everything that we need on there, right? We've got the 811 AC. We've got Bluetooth. We've got the discrete daughter board for even overclocking capabilities. We've got the USB 3. We've got the by 16 slot, which is going to tie into our high performance graphics card. You know, we've got everything that we're going to need on there. I mean, even four fan headers, even though we can't even fit that many fans in this uh, thing. But got everything we need situated there. Uh, GPU wise, we're gonna be using this really awesome brand new GTX 670, uh, but this is an ultra small form factor design, right? Uh, specifically designed actually for this chassis. Um, so that's gonna be really cool. It even features a brand new actually uh, Cooltech fan where it actually downward fires, but it also helps to exhaust simultaneously at the same time. Right. So cool and quiet there. Uh, we of course got the 4770K, which we're gonna pop into this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping things nice and cool, uh, we're gonna be using Noctua's Really nice low profile cooler. I should have did that to you earlier. Really nice cooling solution. I think that's the NH L9i. Yeah, and we're not going to overclock this thing to the extreme level. No, um, definitely not. We're, we want to be able to give a little bit additional performance, but it's definitely not. Yeah, we're not targeting like 4.6 gigahertz or something like that. <laughs> um, but definitely, we're going to be probably targeting something about like 4.2. Maybe you know, flipping on just the TPU switch, taking advantage of the fact that we do have an overclocking capable board with an overclocking capable part and some good quality, uh, even though they're low profile based cooling solutions with that Noctua CPU cooler. Um, we've got then some high performance memory, Kingston HyperX Beast. Uh, 20 I use that a lot, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. Yeah, and well, the black it looks really great with the gold on the board as well. Plus, we've got this really nice non Lee chassis. This is a PCQ30, so ties in really nicely with that Kingston HyperX Beast uh, 24 kit worth of memory. Yeah, we've got the window in the front so you can see everything. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, we then match that all up uh, with a um, ultra small form factor PSU 450 watts high efficiency 80 plus uh, series power supply. And that pretty much wraps us up in terms of everything we're going to throw in this guy, get it situated, and have this really cool um, ultra small form factor mini ITX box. You know, now, now using 450 watts with the 670 and, uh, and the 4770K, it's kind of surprising that it works, but again, this is a high efficiency power supply. And that's important. The good components on the inside. Uh, after you, I know you got to jump on a plane any minute now. So after you leave, we're going to put this together. I'm going to benchmark it, and we're also going to use our kilowatt to just see how uh, how much power is being drawn out of the wall. Yes. Uh, because I, I think people are going to be surprised. As long as you have a good, high-quality power supply, 450 watts will power the system. Yeah, that's correct. Entirely, even under a full gaming load, uh, the fact that, like you said, we're having a high-efficiency PSU, we're good to go. You know, at the end of the day, it's really just a question of also figuring out how you're going to tune the system. You know, if you want to save a little bit more on the power, maximize the efficiency, you wouldn't have to do the overclock, right? Or, you know, we're going to be utilizing uh, two Kingston HyperX SSDs here in this type of configuration. It supports up to three that could be installed in there. But same thing, maybe you would just want to go with a larger single SSD and minimize on the power consumption as well in that respect so there's a lot of different ways you can kind of tweak and tune and maximize the power efficiency but as a whole everything that we've already selected really fits well with this build well you know i think i'm ready to build the fastest system that's ever going to be put into this uh, pcq30 as of today i mean who knows what's going to come out tomorrow and the next yeah. day but it's gonna be the fastest in the world in this in this case so um you gotta hop on a plane right yeah i do gotta hop on a plane anything else you want to add for the for the audience before you take off um, you know, like always, you know, if you guys are really interested and uh, continue to see these type of designs and feedback, we'd really love to see that. You know, feel free to drop it in the Tech Syndicate forums. I'll be popping in and out of there, checking out along that feedback. But, you know, really, not only this DC Mini card, um, but even our, our ultra high performance Mini ITX, you know, it, it comes from, of course, our internal passion to want to bring you guys innovative, cool looking parts. But at the same time, we're really passionately interested in what you guys are uh, wanting to see in PCDIY. So, you know, if uh, you guys can think about it we'd love to try to see if we can actually make it um so you know drop us the feedback it's time to do some benchmarks now for the benchmarks i'm only going to mention the average fps if you want to see the min and the max you can click on the link on the screen go to our website and everything will be right there for you to look at to get started let's do bioshock infinite maxed out at 1080p 
DirectX 11, everything going crazy. The average is 69.67. At 1440p, maxed out, the average is 44.98. Moving right on to Crisis 3, maxed out at 1080p, the average is 22.68. And we turned it down to medium. Uh, we set the filters to 2x MSAA and uh, set the anisotropic filtering to 4x. And the average there was 32.04. Mind you, we test this in an area that really stresses the GPU, so once you get indoors uh, into some areas with less effects and less um, geometry, it's much faster. 1440p, maxed out, unplayable, 13.44 frames a second, and at those medium settings I just mentioned, 19.16. Now, the only way to really play it at 1440p is to turn anti-aliasing all the way off, um, and then set the texture resolution down to medium, set the system spec to medium and put anisotropic filtering to 4x. At that, you get 48.20 frames per second. I recommend playing it at 1080p on this machine. CSGO, 1080p, completely maxed out. The average is 226.24. 1440p, maxed out, 144.56. Just barely playable, 144 terrible. Oh my god. Oh my god. Heaven, 1080p, completely maxed out. Average FPS of 32.20, the score of 812. 1440p maxed out, 19.7, with a score of 496. Next up, let's check out Natural Selection 2 at uh, 1080p, with ambient occlusion turned on. Everything else is maxed as well. Average was 70 frames per second. 1080p with ambient occlusion off, 124.68 frames per second. 1440p, ambient occlusion on, 38 frames per second. Ambient occlusion off, 71.28 frames per second. Trying to, we tested that out at 1080p, and we set the filters to max like crazy people, because that kills the frame rate. But at 1080p, we were able to get 51.32 frames per second. Maxed out at 1440p, we were only able to get 29.76 frames per second. I do want to note that it's uh, kind of crazy to be running trying to with the filters all the way maxed out. You can uh, change the uh, filters to just FXAA instead of everything else and easily get over 100 frames per second even at 1440p. So the game runs really well, but I wanted to stress it quite a bit. And last but not least, we did test out Zelda Skyward Sword using uh, the Dolphin emulator. And um, we were able to get 28.84 frames per second. Here's the settings we used. We always run the internal resolution at 3x native. To test out productivity and um, also rendering, we decided to use a new program from ASUS called RealBench. Now, I prefer RealBench to something like CineBench uh, and all the other synthetics out there because they use real programs like Blender uh, and Handbrake. Uh, and then they use GIMP, as you can see on the screen here. So here you can see the scores on the screen, image editing 388, encoding uh, 464, multitasking 286, and the total system score was 379. Uh, this may not mean much to you because this is a brand new benchmark and uh, you know you don't really have a baseline to know what these numbers mean. So just watch in the future as we get new products, we're going to use this benchmark because it's real. So there you can see that having a 670 this small uh, crammed into a tiny case like this can be quite nice. This is uh, one hell of a gaming rig, so we'll be enjoying this one. If you want to compare this to another recent uh, computer that we built, check out the uh, Honey Badger. It's another ITX machine. And we also tested the, uh, the brand new GTX 760 in a Honey Badger as well. So check out those two. They're all small form factor and they all have similar performance. This one does win by a few FPS, not by much, but it does win. So it is the fastest uh, that we currently have. And it's thanks to the uh, small 670. You're not gonna get anything faster than the PCQ30. It's just not happening.